Hi, this is Tim from Morial Radio and Morial TV here live uh, via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, one of the believers, had the question based on Luke chapter 9, verse 31. What is the meaning of Christ's departure? It's quite interesting in the original Greek. The term there is not aphistiomai or apostasia or anything of that nature. It's not the term hard pezzo, rapture, his, 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 his ascension, being that. It's not the term anesthesia, his, his resurrection from the dead and going to heaven. It's none of those things. The term there is echodon, echodon simply the Greek term for exodus. Now he had been speaking in the transfiguration to Moses and to Elijah about his mission, what he was going to accomplish, in terms of bringing salvation and so forth. But both Moses and Elijah had an exodus experience. Elijah had to flee, uh, which he did, and Moses led the exodus. Now, in Jewish thought, the Messiah would be a prophet like Moses, according to Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. So, in his dialogue with Moses, he spoke of his own experience as the experience of Moses being somehow recapitulated. Also, the experience of Elijah being recapitulated. What ultimately happened with Elijah is, he was raptured, he was caught up, he was harpezot. The ascension of Jesus, as we talk about in the book Harpezo, was a rapture. He was harpezo, he was taken up into heaven. So the experience of Elijah would be recapitulated with Jesus being taken up, but the experience of Moses would in an exodus. Well, how? Well, we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul writing, and Paul plainly and clearly uses the exodus under Moses as the illustration to explain salvation. We come out of Egypt, we come through the water. Again, Pharaoh, not only a type of the Antichrist, but a picture of Satan, the god of this world, Egypt being the world. And we come through the water and go to the promised land by a baptism into heaven, being led by the Messiah, the same as Moses led the children of Israel out, the Messiah being a prophet like Moses. So he is drawing on the mosaic motif of the Exodus. He would bring salvation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the Exodus is a picture of how we get saved, as well as a type of the rapture and resurrection. That's why they brought Joseph's bones with them, because the dead in Christ will rise first, and as we've explained multiple times, um, Pharaoh's magicians counterfeiting the miracles of Moses and Aaron is a type of the way the Antichrist and false prophet are going to oppose Jesus and his witnesses and so forth at the end of the age. And the judgments on Egypt are replayed in the book of Revelation. So the Exodus is certainly a type of the rapture and resurrection, uh, resurrection, but it is first of all a type and an illustration of our salvation according to St. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 10. We've had our Exodus. So he's talking to Moses who led the Exodus, which is only a shadow of the one the Messiah was going to achieve when he brought salvation. Only it would not be in Egypt, it said he would accomplish it at Jerusalem. Secondly, uh, again Elijah. Elijah's exodus, as it were, he was removed. Uh, but when he was removed, he left his disciples. He left Elisha and the sons of the prophets to carry on the mission. So Jesus when he went, he left the apostles and the disciples and us to carry on the mission. That's what it's talking about, and it is a very curious use of that term, the Greek term for Exodus. Thank you so much for your question. It was an excellent one. God bless and thank you. My name is Jacob Brash.
Blessings to your friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo. What the scripture actually teaches about the rapture. The snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo. All available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.